This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone. So today's class is about EC2. That stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. In simple words, EC2 is nothing but a, a remote server which is physically located at some place. And as a user, you can simply log in into that from your browser or from any any tool and you can work on that. And since it's like on demand, that means as per your requirement, as per your uh, configuration needs, you can you can use that. And AWS will be charging based on the uses. That means in case you are not using your server, you should stop it. You should shut it down because if it will keep on running, AWS will keep on charging on that. So if out of 24 hours, if you just need for a few hours, you should stop after that. There are many ways to uh, consider, uh, configure your shutdown things as well. Suppose uh, you want that, okay, if my CPU usage is less than 10% for continuously for half an hour, in that case, uh, we should shut down our system, something like that, right? So we can even configure that. So we'll be starting with the agenda and we'll be creating our one instance and how to log in into that and everything we will be talking about. <clears throat> so overview of EC2 service. EC2 instance type. Launch your first EC2 instance. Key pair for EC2 instance. Connect to EC2 instance. And basic commands overview on EC2 instance. So let's start with the first one that is uh, instance type. So when you are creating an EC2 instance, there are many type of instances available. It depends completely on your requirement. You can see here the major types are general purpose. When you don't know like what exactly your requirement is or maybe in the beginning of project, you don't know like what would be the data size, whether it would be uh, more towards storage or it would be more towards memory or it need more computation if that is the case right you can go with general purpose ec2 instances and you can see here there are many types t3 is there t2 is there m5 is there the difference is basically the number of cpus and the memory that's the difference basically if you remember when we created our trial account we created one cloud nine environment that was our uh, development environment, right? And behind the Cloud9 environment, there was an EC2 instance. And we selected something like T2.micro because that is the smallest configuration and that comes under free tier. If you go a little bit up, there will be T3. So T2 is the smallest one, then T3, and then as per our requirement, you can go with anything else. But you don't need to remember. You may be thinking like, how do we know that T2 is small and T3 is big and M5 is even bigger? You don't need to remember. When you are creating your instance, at that point of time, you have the flexibility to select the type and there it will display how much of memory and how much of CPUs are allocated to that type of instance. That will help you to take a decision. Okay, so this was the general purpose. If you go to the next category, compute optimized. If your logic is like more on the computation side, suppose machine learning algorithm where you want to process the data again and again for a, uh, you can say, a more accurate result, or you are doing some big data processing, where your processing is, computation is more, right? In that case, you can go with compute optimized instance type, all starting with C, right? C means compute. So C6, C5, C3, C4, all these are compute optimized instances there can be memory optimized where you want to do in memory operation maybe like a, you can say a cache if you cache memory right because you are accessing something and they want to keep that recently accessed items in the cache so such type of requirement or i would say a spark right spark has in memory a in memory data processing uh, technique because it loads the data once and then it will keep on performing different type of operation different type of transformation and these things will keep on happening in the memory so for such jobs for spark jobs we need a 
memory optimized instances the next category is uh, storage optimized <clears throat> where your processing is not that uh, important because you you may not be interested to uh, processing it but you are just reading and writing the data you are supposed downloading some data from s3 and putting into your server or you are reading it from there putting it to somewhere else so where storage is more required read and write operations are more but processing is not that much in that case you can even go with storage optimized and then one more category accelerated computing when you want to i mean uh, uh, even if you come compare with compute optimized right even these accelerated computing is much you can say higher configuration uh, as compared to compute optimized usually with graphic or you can say very heavy online gamings right there is too much load right there we can use these type of instances so you don't need to remember all these names even i don't remember i'm working from last four or five years the only thing you should understand is that there are different type of instances available with aws those can be storage optimized memory optimized compute optimized and general purpose as well usually whenever you are not aware even even forget about a learning point of view even in my current project right we are going with m5 that comes under general purpose because we don't have any specific requirement okay i want storage optimized or i want compute optimized it's it's nothing like that so usually like i would say 80 percent of time you can go with general purpose ec2 instances but yes if you are into a discussion with your client with your solution architect and they say that no 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 my data is like uh, very compute uh, i mean uh, i need a lot of computation so i don't want to go with general purpose machine in that case you should be aware and you should be able to guide them that okay if you don't want general purpose we have compute optimized as well and we can go with that that's the purpose of explaining all these uh, instance types so any any doubt on this slide you can ask me otherwise we'll move to the next one <clears throat> okay so let's create our first uh ec2 instance so once you will go to ec2 console on your aws console right it will ask you i mean if there is no instance it will give an option that you can launch new instance what are the configuration required for it all these are captured here in the screenshot for your quick reference but now we will do it live PDF, you can refer it later. So I will be going to my browser and we'll do it now. <clears throat> okay, so what I will do is right now there is one instance, but that is terminated. I created for some purpose over the weekend, so you can ignore it. What I will do is I will launch a new instance. So you can see this one launch instance. <clears throat> okay, so you can first of all give some name it's completely up to you you can give any name I, I would give my first instance okay and then application and os image you can choose any operating system but usually uh, for our uh, you can say cloud stuff we usually don't choose the windows because all the cloud operation all the cloud technologies whether it's a hadoop spark scala and all these things they perform better on linux based os and all your entire aws is based on linux based os <clears throat> so the very first one which is designed and you can say enhanced for aws stuff you can see this one amazon linux that's a, another flavor of linux you can say that another one is ubuntu is there windows is there red hat is there and many more but most of the time you can go with the first one until or unless you have a very specific requirement if you are uh, you are going with a tool and the tool can be installed only on windows or only on ubuntu if that is the case you may have to launch a ubuntu or windows uh, ec2 instance but in my experience till now i never encountered such scenario so you can go with the first one amazon linux and <clears throat> you can come down you can see this one amazon linux 2 ami and these are like other details we don't need to go into uh, much detail in that and architecture 64 bit that's good instance type this is important right we were talking about this one so if you go with the first one 
free tier eligible t2 micro the family of instance type is t2 only one cpu is there and only one gb of ram is there but that is fine for our learning point of view that should be good and this is only ram and cpu it's not hard disk hard disk we will configure in upcoming steps let's click on this and let's see what are other things available okay so this one is t2 micro let's go with if you see t2 small right you see that the cpu is one only but ram is increased to 2 gb but this is not free tier that's also important point then you will go next t2 medium two cpus and four gb memory then t2 large two cpu and eight gb memory and t2 x large four cpu and 16 gb memory similarly you will find a t3 family you can see that t3 nano t3 micro t3 small t3 medium t3 large t3 extra large t2 2x large and all like that <clears throat> like this one okay so out of all these possible uh, configuration you notice that the one configuration the first one t1 dot micro is the only configuration which is available for free uses and that is good enough for our practical stuff it's okay so we'll be selecting with select going with t1 dot micro move to the next moving to the next one key pair login you will create an instance that is fine but after that you want to log in into that if you don't if you cannot log in then there is no point of launching a server how to log in into that one way is like creating a username and password which is not a secure uh, way of authentication the new way and the secure way is that at the time of ec2 instance creation you can create a key pair key pair is nothing but a public and private 